optional extra that we charge money for. You don't want it. Yes, uh, this is the 16th of February, 2001. We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. This test is uh, being, uh, we're going to run various produce waste here. Uh, the test is done uh, for uh, Albertson Supermarket. We've been uh, working with Ken Simmons, John Pelletier, and Laura Kidway in Boise. Um, normally a Vincent screw press is designed to get the most juice extraction, highest possible yield for, say, a apple juice or grape juice processor. Uh, in this case, we've redesigned this machine to make a very light squeeze. The intent of the machine is quite a bit different. We don't want to squeeze all the pulp down into the sewer. Uh, instead, we want to remove merely the loose water, something that would be sewer acceptable. At the same time, we're going to break up trash produce, spoiled produce, uh, waste, in a manner that uh, it can be handled in a plastic bag, that uh, it will uh, be broken up so you don't have people crawling in the dumpster for it, and uh, it'll increase the bulk density by breaking it up, thus uh, reducing uh, loads going to landfill. This machine works with an auger. And there, the silver bar you see right here is a breaker bar to help break up the produce that is thrown away. It will also catch uh, plastic bags if they're inadvertently thrown in there. That's the one bugaboo we have with the machine. We can't accept plastic bags. This is the action of the machine. And uh, the produce broken up will come out this door right here. Right now we'll throw in some oranges and show you what it does to get it loaded with oranges. We started this testing a couple days ago and found that, uh, that's fine Paul, that uh, we didn't have enough capacity, but as you can see this is taking it away very rapidly. These are spoiled oranges. We're already getting juice out. And pretty soon this door will open. We've got an extra heavy weight. We haven't tested this before. We think we got the right weight. It's about three times heavier than we ran before. Normally you would have a hose connected to uh, this outlet going through a floor drain. Here's what the oranges look like coming out. We've already pretty well cleared the machine. Here's some of the action. Here's the juice we got from the oranges. We're now going to do a, a box full of these tomatoes. They're actually pretty good. Um, they won't get too much juice from them. We should start getting red liquid out pretty soon. We are getting the high capacity we wanted. We checked amps. Uh, Two days ago we were running 9 amps, now with triple the speed we've only gone up to 10 amps. This uh, machine, uh, the uh, motor is rated at 12.8 amps, it's one horsepower. The gearbox we're using is way oversized, it's good for five horsepower, but we, uh, it was the best we could find yesterday morning. and there you see some of the red liquid coming out. We're going to run some spot tests. Uh, this is what happens when you throw in a bunch of bananas. And nobody's going to, you know, no homeless is going to eat those. Here go some whole heads of the cabbage and lettuce, that sort of thing. Edward, what are the amps running? It's still 10 amps. We're uh, one horsepower, so. Oh, okay, under 10 amps. We're doing, uh, using, uh, we can get by with a smaller motor. Certainly a smaller gearbox. There's uh, heads of corn. Boy, they went in a hurry. That was uh, five of them. Go ahead with the uh, celery. And you want to grab the celery? Oh, and so a little what's coming out here. 
bananas, there goes the celery. And our waste is coming out here. We're still getting the juice out. I'll show you later on this. Juice is actually quite liquid. It's, it'll flow down the sewer without plugging the sewer, causing any uh, problems from that standpoint. It's very liquid. Uh, and here go potatoes. Now, potatoes, we won't get any juice out of them. Uh, you can squeeze any out with your hand. But uh, what juice is coming out, they're passing through the machine and shoving material out. There go onions. And maybe we'll see this door open. Not much juice coming out. That's the residue of the potatoes. That is no juice coming out from them. Onions pushing open a little bit. This is our, our waste. We have some, that's about as large a piece as you will find. They roll down. Most of it is pretty mushy stuff. Now we're throwing a bunch of, oh, put the cord on it. Yes, here, here comes radishes with a uh, wire tie on them. Uh, wire tie is not going to be any problem. It's plastic film and rags that cause problems. And there's a piece of potato. We're now going to throw in uh, a bunch of oranges, just so you can see a little more of the action here as material goes through this machine. The weight creates pressure to hold the door. The heavier the weight, the more juice you squeeze out. And I see a combination of tomato, orange, every kind of juice coming out right there. Now, what, next we're going to show you what happens if we run something with the plastic bag in here. Yep, just throw them in. see some plastic bag probably wrapped around in here. We may see plastic bag going around. Okay, we're going to, we just threw in the bag of uh, bags, and now we're throwing in the rest of our oranges. I don't know if you'll see that two bags probably isn't enough to cause much of a loss of capacity, but um, everything's still working apparently fine. But I expect to see the bags still stuck down in there. I don't expect these bags to come out. Okay, well, you still haven't uh, seen the bags go anywhere. I'm expecting to back up the machine and show you how to get them out. Our breaker bar concept works real well. It goes right through the hopper. There's the other side of this breaker bar. it and see if I can bring a plastic bag out again. See some tomatoes coming back. There's uh, some orange coming back. No sign of the plastic bags. I don't expect them to get through. Although it looks like they could have. Now that is they aren't stuck where they should have gotten stuck. Going forward again. And here we have uh, the broomstick test. Uh, if we put a, somebody put a broomstick in there. It, um, yeah, broomsticks aren't a problem. You know, the amps never went over 10 while we did the broomstick. We're going to try another box of tomatoes, see if we can chase those plastic bags that are out of there. They ought to show up.
Be sure to tell me if you see the plastic bags, okay. Edward. Still got some pieces of broomstick. They'll eventually make their way out. This is not a positive displacement screw press. That is, there'll be a lot of churning. Then the question comes up, how do you clean out this machine? Um, what we need to do is take off the weight. Paul, do you want to take off the weight? And we, this door, of course, starts to open more on its own accord. Here you can see the perforated screen that we're using. We selected a uh, heavy screen. Uh, for abrasion resistance. Um, we normally use a slightly lighter. The amount of filtration you get won't change much. There's a screw turning around. Those bags may have snuck past us. They may be wrapped around the shaft in there someplace. Uh, looking at the machine, we're getting uh, some water and bleach. Um, there's a motor with a reversing switch on it. There's your gearbox. Uh, and we've been feeding in. There's that breaker bar. The screen surface is right there that we were just looking at. And here's the door without a weight. Okay, we're gonna, we've got a, uh, uh, three or four gallons of water. We're gonna pour some bleach in it. And we have a bag of ice. Okay, here goes the ice. Oops. Oh, it would have gone the ice. Okay, Paul, if you'll pour in the water. And could you... Okay, the amps are still 9. Okay. Yeah, we're down at 9.3, no load. Making uh, water coming out there. Oops. And we're getting some ice out here. So it didn't take nearly that big of a bag of ice. And uh, when we throw in bleach, and we saw the last gallon of bleach there, and uh, that's what we have. Machine uh, ready for the weekend. Okay, we just tried to lift the bag, and of course we can't. Uh, we put way too much stuff through there. The only reason we overflowed this pail was the uh, uh, three gallons of bleach and water we threw in. Uh, the bag is heavy from, we did run quite a bit of produce through there, and so obviously somebody's going to have to change bags uh, uh, for what we did. That's probably about three bags full, not one. supposed to be against the wall. Uh, no, we, we had to cut the screw short by about a half a flight to make it fit the gearbox. It was a, uh, oh, and you'll see some other things here on this screw. And it's, we had to weld on it. It was an experimental screw we had in the lab, and uh, we had to restore it to more or less a normal configuration. You heard some scratching when we first started up. That was because of this screw not being a, a, what would be a, a normal screw. It's also short back here, so we've got the produce. Normally, you won't have this at all. The screw will go back. That's a machine shaft that belongs inside the gearbox, but this was a special fit arrangement. Uh, we could put wheels on this stand. Um, and that's, uh, and it, oh, it's running on 110 volts. This is just a, uh, an extension cord. We did hook an ammeter in the way. It's plugged into the wall in the factory. We've got a, you know, the factory's off 